we're going to do today is we're going to create a, uh, a small boat, a little model boat, just like this one here. Uh, and this is going to demonstrate the use of uh, lofting and the lofting technique. Um, as you can see, this is quite a complex shape, and the only realistic way of getting this sort of a shape is to use the lofting uh, command. So let's get into it. Um, we'll start off with a new file. What, what I need to do first is to create some uh, additional planes. Now, to loft between profiles, I need to have um, planes, um, some parallel planes to, to loft between. So I'm just going to show all these these planes. I'm going to make some two more planes that are parallel to the front plane. So I'm going to select the front plane, go to Insert Reference Geometry Plane, and I'm going to have that these two planes, two additional planes, offset by 100 millimeters each. So that makes the that will make the boat from bow to stern um, 200 millimeters long. So plane two is the back, and what we're going to do is I'm going to create a sketch on this plane which which represents the cross-sectional profile at the back of the boat. Now in order to do that I'm going to create a um, horizontal line and then I'm going to create the curved profile at the back of the boat using a spline and then I'm going to use a center line that goes from the origin down to um, Make the boat so it looks something like that. Okay, so the reason I'm doing it in um, doing it like this is because I want both sides of the boat to be symmetrical, and it's much easier to create just one side and then mirror the other side. That way, I get a completely symmetrical boat. It doesn't really matter what I do, just to manipulate it, it will always be symmetrical. Okay, so that's the first profile. Now I need to do the central profile on plane one. So I'll create a sketch like that, and I'll do exactly the same thing. Um, I'm just going to start with a center line this time, and then a horizontal line, and then the curved profile on the side of the boat. It looks like that. And then I'm going to select them all and mirror. So now I've got two profiles. All we need to do is the profile at the front. Now, lofting between profiles, the profiles always need to be a closed profile, okay? The only exception to that is when you want to loft to a point. And in order to loft to a point, then what you do, what you use is this point command. Now, we want that to be on the origin, so I'm just going to put a point on the origin. And I'll just show you what that will look like if I create the... Uh, Create the loft now. So I can loft between these points. It's already selected the, the front point. Select that profile and that profile, and that's what it'll look like. It's actually not the shape I want. I want that bow to be a bit different, and, and it's not quite right. So I'm just going to delete that. What we need, instead of just using profiles, we can use guide curves, which add additional control to the um, to the formation of the loft. Um, the way we add guide curves is by creating a line which links all these profiles together. So it's very important that it's a single open line that starts at the start um, profile and goes through each one of the intermediate profiles and ends at the end profile. You can have as many guide curves as you want, but all of them must follow that. So the first guide curve we're going to use is the guide curve that follows the um, the keel of the boat. So I create a sketch. Um, I'm oops. I'm going to use just a spline to keep things easy. Um, I'm just going to go like that um, and that. Now, as I said, what's important is that the um, the guide curve must go through this profile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a relation between the end of that line and this profile. So if I select both, what we want is the pierce point. As you can see that extends the line to, to pierce the, extends the guide curve point to pierce the um, profile. 
and the same with this. Now it's important you select a sketch element and not the end of a line because otherwise if you select two points like that you've only got the option of coincident and while that works most of the time it doesn't always work. A pierce point is a better thing and in order to use a pierce point you need to select a line in the profile and the point on the guide curve and then you have the option of a pierce constraint. Now this one already started on the origin it's already I'll select that it's already coincident to the origin so I'm just going to leave that it should be fine. Now I just need to tweak the profile a little bit not quite happy with it let's just use these things that's a bit more of the shape that I was looking for as a profile from the back of the boat maybe a bit more like that and that's what I'm after okay now the from looking from the top the profile I wasn't quite happy with the shape of that uh, of the boat so I'm going to create another sketch another a, um, a guide curve to or two more guide curves to um, uh, to define that that profile a bit more so creating a sketch on the top plane again using a spline I'm going to select this and the same thing applies I'm going to create pierce constraints with the the profiles that point there and this line here pierce um, and again I'm just going to change that profile just a little bit so that it's a bit more the shape that I, I was after so something like something like that now this only gives us one side. We want to do both sides. Now there's always the temptation, I'll just edit that sketch, there's always the temptation for people to do this, to create, to mirror them and have two profiles. Now you cannot use this because you can only use, a guide curve can only consist of a single line starting at the start and finishing at the finish. Okay, so that, that doesn't work. What you can do though to create something that's symmetrical on the other side is to create another sketch on the top plane again and this time use convert entities to, cre to create that sketch and then a center line to mirror and then you can convert that one side to construction geometry okay by following this technique it means that both sides are exactly symmetrical and if you change the first side then the, the second side will also change. So now you can see we've got a bit more shape in our boat and when we construct our lofting we'll have a, a much better um, much better form of boat. So we go to the loft again select the point as the first profile, second profile, and the third profile and that's the shape we had before which we weren't happy with. What we can now do is select the guide curves. So firstly we'll select this guide curve. Oops, select as, uh, just select that as a guide curve, make sure you click, click in the guide curve box, select that. As you can see it's created a funny shape here that's because and that means we need to define the this, this particular top piece and that piece there and so now we've got the shape uh, exactly as we want if we don't like that shape it's very easy to modify those guide curves and the profiles to get it to the shape that we want okay um, I'll just show you I think if I just modify the this bit here it might look a little bit more sensible Okay, so I'm happy with that for now. What we can do next is to shell the boat out. So I'll select the top surface. Uh, let's call that three millimeters thick. Now, what often happens is you have this minimum curvature, radius of curvature. Um, most of the time, that doesn't really matter because, uh, so you just set it OK and it will still shell. The reason why it does that is because these little sharp edges um, are very difficult for, for the software to deal with. Uh, to avoid that, 
you can put a little bit of a fillet on the front edge and that will get rid of it if that's a problem. But quite often it's, it's just a warning. So, um, having said that, um, I'll show you how to use cut um, a cut loft. And I'll just before we put the shell on, I'll just put that in the back. Let's say we want to have the back of the boat um, cut in a very um, complex shape. So again, what we need to do is we need to create a couple more planes parallel to the right plane. So if we go insert reference geometry plane. Um, Okay, let's call it yeah, 100 millimeters. That's fine. Um, oops, this time I'll do another one. Insert reference geometry plane and just flip the side to there. Now, starting off with the sketch on um, one side, let's use a um, a spline. Perhaps that will give us this kind of shape. And I'll just finish that off with a, a line like that. So what we're making is a, a closed profile because we always need to have closed profiles. And on plane three, I'll create a sketch that has another, perhaps a, another sort of complex profile. And we want to have a, we want to have this symmetrical, so I'm just going to copy that across to, to plane four, which is this and that convert entities, and now we've got that profile copied. Now this time, instead of using a boss base loft, we use as a cut loft. So, oops, select those three profiles in the right order. And uh, now what it's got is gives you the option of um, of retaining the bodies. Now you see there's a little bit of a sliver there. What I've done is I've, I've made a shape that's that's uh, not very sensible. I just need to go back and modify that shape. It doesn't extend high enough above the um, above the uh, uh, above the body. So. Just move that up and that will cut through the whole body. Let's just make sure this one's the same. Move that out. Okay, so what you've got now is a fairly complex form in the back of that boat. Um, this is a very useful technique because it's really, um, still not quite happy with this, I'm just going to have another go at it. It's really complex, it's really difficult to get that sort of level of complexity of, of shape in any other way. So that's the back of the boat, very complex. And now when that shells, as you can see, it's, it's a complex shape. So um, next we're going to create a mast. And this is very simple. It'll just be a simple uh, circle um, about there. I'm just going to do a boss extrude um, lined up to about there. And in the second direction, it's just going to be up to next. Okay, so that's the mast. It's a bit tall, but it doesn't matter. I'll adjust that later. So, um, again, we need to have a couple more planes. Um, I'm just going to do an offset plane. This time, I'm going to just do the quick way of selecting the plane, holding the control key down, and dragging the plane up. Oh, it doesn't always work. Let's call it 50 instead. So, I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. So, yep, select the plane, open sketch. Now, this time I'm just going to use a single profile. Just going to use a curve, and I'm going to create a three point curve from there. This is the bottom of the sail. So, what I'm creating here is a sail. Um, I need another plane halfway up, so like that and create another sketch on that plane like that and then on the top of the mast I'm going to create another point 
So, the way we're going to create the plane because of the, the sail, because the sail is very thin, it's essentially like a, a, a surface. So we're going to use the surface loft command. So insert surface loft, and again select these profiles like that. Now, you see what happens is these little green uh, dots is it's not creating that plane because what happens is it's trying to link the wrong bits of the, uh, the sketches together. Um, if you get this this problem, all you need to do is drag the sketch, the little green dot, so you can see those points now line up into something that's logical, and now it will create a, um, a plane. So now we have a fairly complex little little sail. Uh, it's got it's it's got more curvature in the centre and less at the top and the bottom. So there we have it. That's your little sailboat.